This is going to be a brief review of the Casio FX9750 Generation 3. So this is the newest graphing calculator from Casio at the moment, and it is the third in their FX975 series. So this is the original packaging it comes in, and you can see right here that they have this sticker over the screen on the package that is sort of daring you to compare this calculator to the TI-84+. Plus. So it's quite obvious who Casio is trying to compete with. And you can see on the back they also have this chart here that lists some of the features that the TI-84 Plus has and the features that this calculator has. They are claiming that it can do all of the same things. And we will soon find out that that is, for the most part, accurate. But one of the areas that this calculator definitely beats the TI-84 is its price. So to get a TI-84 plus CE, the newest TI-84, um, you will be paying about $120 whether that's on Amazon or in any major store like Target or Walmart. This particular calculator is currently going for about $41 on Amazon, and I got this one at Target because I wanted it now, and it cost me $49.99. So I will go ahead and open this up and then start taking a look at it. So here is a bunch of paperwork and batteries are included. I guess you can just... So one of the first things you'll notice about this calculator is how thick it is. You can see there it's about as wide as my thumbnail. These days it's uncommon to find a calculator this thick. A lot of them are thinner, which is nice. This is the TI-84 plus CE. It's a lot more sleek. And here is the HP Prime which is even thinner still. So part of the reason for this is because the Casio has those disposable batteries and most other calculators will have rechargeable lithium ion batteries which are much thinner. But a more bulky form factor is something you are going to have to deal with for the low price. But other than that, the build quality is quite nice. Um, it's solid. It doesn't rock. It sits flat on the table. The buttons look nice and feel nice. On the back, there is a sort of geometric pattern with the reset button in the middle, and there's a little bit of an indent here for your hand that makes it a little bit more comfortable to hold one-handed. And then also on the top, there is a USB port and another port for plugging things in to collect data. You will likely not use either of those, but they are there. And then arguably the most important part is the screen so you can see that you have a sort of classic calculator display no backlighting no front lighting no color but for what it is it works pretty well there's sort of a matte finish on the screen so it doesn't suffer too much from glare and it's high resolution enough for most circumstances so first up on the software side of things is the regular calculation screen and that can be found in the main menu here by pushing this button at any time and then once you enter it it looks like almost every other calculator out there you have your expressions on the left type whatever you want in press enter and you get your answer on the right and your history will just sort of pile up above so this casio also has quite a few templates for things like fractions and integrals you can kind of get an idea of those sorts of things from looking at the keyboard right here and then also there is the math menu so if you push f4 for math right there you get this list of options where you can enter matrices, a logarithm with non-base 10, absolute value, derivative, integral, and summation. So that's just an example of what the integral template would look like, and then you just fill out those boxes. Press enter, and then you will get your answer. And in a lot of cases, like this one, the calculator was able to give you a fractional answer rather than a decimal answer. So for most simple integrals, if it's possible, you will get your answer in exact fractional form. And same thing goes for things like square roots. If I type in, for example, the square root of 24 and then hit enter, I will get the simplified form of that, so two times the square root of six. And of course, you can always easily convert fractional answers or simplified roots to decimals by pressing this button right there. So if I press that, it will instantly convert the square root up there into decimal form. Um, so that's all I'm gonna say about the main calculation screen, but typically that's gonna be where you spend most of your time. So I'll just run through each app here briefly. Um, first, 
you have this stat app which is used for entering values in lists which you can use back in the main calculation screen and then next is the app that is abbreviated EACT. Um, so here, it's basically like a notes app on your calculator. If for some reason you felt the need to take notes with your calculator, um, I made this just to sort of show you what it is capable of. And you can just type regular text there. And then in any place you want, you can enter a calculation line. So it just evaluated this integral here that I typed in. And then you can insert things like graphs into the note. So you can open those, look at the picture, and then go back to the notes document that you were looking at before. So uh, I doubt many people will be using that, but it's also a feature that's advertised to teachers if for some reason they wanted to send out a file to all their students via uh, their calculators, then they could do that. And then next is the spreadsheet app. This is very similar to almost every other spreadsheet app on a calculator. You can enter values and short expressions. And if you really know what you're doing, eventually graph the data on your calculator. And then here is the regular graphing app. So this is very similar to most other calculators once again. Enter your function and then graph it and you will see them drawn out on the screen. And of course you can do things like change the viewing window size, zoom in or out, trace a function, or do things like solve for roots, maximum, minimums, intersects, integrals, etc. of either or both functions that you have graphed. And in terms of graphing speed, you sort of saw when I graphed these two functions, it's pretty fast. Um, it's not instant, but don't expect it to be uh, a big deal having to wait for this calculator to graph your function. So I'll do one more test here really quick. So here we go. This is sine of x squared. So here we go. That was pretty fast, definitely compared to most of the color screen calculators out there. Although, of course, this screen is not color, so Casio has a bit of an advantage there. So another thing I should mention about graphing speed is that the Casio FX9750 Generation 3 still does not have a real detect asymptotes function. So if you don't know what I mean by this, a lot of calculators like the TI-84 Plus have the capability to detect when they're about to graph an asymptote, and then they don't draw a line connecting each part of the graph. So with a function like the tangent function that has a lot of asymptotes, a more expensive calculator like the TI-84 Plus would have the ability to detect those asymptotes and not draw them in, which is more accurate. But this calculator doesn't have that function, and so if I graph something like this, which is just a very simple tangent function, uh, you can see that there are these lines here connecting the squiggles of the tangent function and those should not be there. In some cases you'll find like when all the circumstances are perfect, like when you have a viewing window that the calculator likes and you graph it, you can see here it does not end up drawing in the asymptotes, but you can't be guaranteed that that will happen every time. Okay, next up is the Dynamic Equations app. All this is pretty much is to give students a way to visualize how different constants in functions affect those functions. You have your list here, and you can select any of these built-in functions, or you can enter your own. But for now, I have just selected this one. You can see you have A, B, and C here, where you would normally have constants. But after you press enter, you'll come to this page where you can enter different values for your variables. And then once you're ready to draw the function, you just press enter again, and you'll get this loading screen. And then you can see it will automatically cycle through different values of A, and then keep the other values that you set constant, and it will draw each graph for each different value of A. Wow. Okay, next is this table app. This is very simple. Um, you can just enter a function, and then you get a table. And you can also set the different start and end points for the values of x, and also the step size for which each value of x will change. Okay, next is an app for graphing conic sections. This app can handle any conic section that you can't graph in the regular graphing app, so things like ellipses. But the thing is, you have to enter the equation of the graph in a specific set form, and the forms are all in a list right here. Don't expect to just be able to enter any random equation and have it graph that 
equation for you. Once you select the form, you'll be asked to put in different values for a, b, and whatever other variables are in that equation right there. And then it's just like any other graph. You hit draw and it will draw your function out. So this next app is an equation solver and there's three different menus here. You can solve simultaneous equations, polynomial equations, or just a single variable numeric solver. So just as an example, I will hit F2 for the polynomial equation solver and then it's going to ask me what degree polynomial is and I'm going to select 2 and once again you get a pre-selected equation form here where all of the constants and variables are on the left and zero is on the right and then and zero is on the right and then you enter your different values for a b and c i have some already entered here and then once you are ready to solve hit f1 for solve and you will get in this case your two roots in decimal form in this little chart here and then in this case they were able to use the quadratic formula to give an exact answer five plus or minus the square root of 17 over four you won't get exact answers like that for every equation that you enter in this app. Um, next is the programming app. It's unlikely that most of you will be using this, but it's here and this app uses version of basic that Casio has been using for years. Um, there are programs on the internet, including ones from my website, which I will leave down in the description. You can look at those if you care, but that's pretty much all I'm going to say about that. This is a finance app and you have a ton of different functions here for different basic financial calculations. And then these four down here at the bottom have more to do with connecting your calculator to data collection or connecting the different calculators together, managing the memory and just general settings. So you'll likely not use any of these except for maybe this one. And then finally, as advertised on the box here, you have the app for programming in Python. And this works just like the main programming app, except obviously the programs will be in the Python programming language rather than the Casio version of BASIC. And then at the very end, they include this geometry app, which a lot of calculators have, but likely no one ever really uses. Um, you get this cursor here, which moves too slow when you click the directional pad and too fast when you hold it down and in this app you can do things like draw different shapes and find intersections of lines or draw parallel lines so good luck if you decide to use this app for whatever reason. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about has to do with the overall user experience and that is these silly little menus that are in almost every app at the bottom of the screen here. So most other calculators, once you enter a menu, it will take up the entire screen and it's easier to see what's going on because you have a nice clear list of items to select. On this calculator, that's not the case. Casio is intent on continuing with these little contextual buttons right here and with using this little menu that takes up only the bottom of the screen. And in my opinion, that's not the best way to do things because you get a lot of situations like this where they have to abbreviate all of the different menu items. So this is nice in some respects in that you can see what's going on in the rest of your screen while you're selecting your function from the menu, but everything just feels way more cramped than maybe it should. This tiny menu at the bottom of the screen runs through almost all the different apps that you'll use and some of the words are so heavily abbreviated that you don't exactly know what the heck they mean. Once you figure out what everything means, then it's not that big of a deal, but when you're first starting out, it can really make things a little bit confusing. So now I'm just going to do a simple speed test. I have this sum here, so here we go, and I'm going to press enter. There's your answer, so pretty quick. Speed, when it comes down to anything involving number crunching, should not be an issue for the most part on this calculator. Um, so in conclusion, you get a new design from the last version, which is, in my opinion, a little bit more sleek, although it's still quite bulky and light and obviously doesn't feel very premium. But for the money, there is not that much competition out there. Again, sort of like I said in the beginning, in terms of capabilities, this calculator is on par with any TI-84 that you can buy. So if you're looking for bang for your buck, this is definitely the calculator to get. Anyways, that's it for this video. Sometime in the future, I'm going to be doing a direct comparison between this calculator and the TI-84 Plus CE. Hopefully you found this useful, and thanks for watching.